Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I'm sitting here smiling and smiling and smiling. It's a beautiful day. It's wonderful. And guess what, my friends? I will be here. I want to get to it already. I will be here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight in person for... Bible study. Man, it's been a while, Brother Garrett, that since I've been able to give my little drum roll and to let the saints know that uh, I'm going to be in place. You know, uh, we've had some wonderful things going on and, and uh, some wonderful places that I had to be. But let me tell you something. There is no place like home. And I'm excited about seeing you, you, and especially you here tonight at the Upper Room and our friends who are tuning in from afar, our members, our friends online, and even, yes, our distractors, detractors and our enemies just keep watching. We thank God for you. And tonight, uh, listen, I, I, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away. But tonight we will most certainly be making a passionate defense uh, for the faith. Do you not know that the deity of Jesus Christ is under attack? But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords. And Jesus Christ indeed is God. God the Son. By God, and I want to talk to you about it tonight. And the Lord is going to bless us real good. Now, I pray that you're having a wonderful day because uh, uh, I'm just excited. I'm just, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about the opportunity to share with you. Now, I have here in my hands a few communications. Listen, people, you guys are fantastic. People are writing me from all over the country. People are writing from out of the country. People are sending emails. People are reaching out. People are saying, Brother Wooden, continue to preach the gospel, continue to stand on the word of God. We're being discovered by people out there, and uh, we want you to share the word. Tell the people about the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, our broadcast, our YouTube presence, what we're doing, because we're standing on God's truth without apology. We're not going to walk it back. We're not going to take it back. For God, I'll live, and for God, I'll die. We're going to stand on the truth of God. God's truth is true when people uh, agree with it and it's true when people disagree with it. I was instructed by the instructions that Paul gave Timothy to preach the word and do it in season and out of season. And uh, Solomon said, buy the truth and sell it not. Thank God for God's truth and we're going to stand on the truth of God. I was so encouraged by this uh, uh, a communication that was given to me. It says, I recently discovered you on YouTube and watched one of your sermons. After that, I watched another and then another. All I could think was, this is a man of God. Thank you so much. I serve as a minister of a church in Phoenix, Arizona, and I have been in ministry for more than 25 years. We need more men of God uh, like you to boldly speak God's truth. I wish I could attend your church. Your ministry blessed me so much. Thank you for your coverage, for your courage, excuse me, your wisdom and your dedication to biblical truth, you will be in my prayers regularly. And he gives his name. Thank you so much, sir, for taking the time to reach out to us and let us know the effect that the word of God is having on your life. Listen to this. I am a Presbyterian minister down in Columbia, South Carolina. I am sure that if Bishop Wooden and I sat down to discuss theology, we would find areas of disagreement, but I love listening to him and I love the way he stands on the truth of the Bible. No matter what the cause, I want him to know that there are Presbyterian ministers out here who support him and find great encouragement uh, in his commitment. 
Please let him know, let him know this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your prayers and for the kind words and taking the time to reach out to us. I, I tell you what, it's a blessing. And my friends, I want you to know I could share these with you. I could read them. I could go over them over and over and over because we're hearing from people uh, from everywhere. Uh, this is a word of encouragement, blessings to Bishop and First Lady and all the saints at the upper room. My wife and I just wanted to drop a line to let you know how blessed, uh, how very blessed, strengthened, and encouraged we are by your ministry. We are from Youngstown, Ohio, and have been watching online regularly now for the past couple of months. Not just the Sunday services, mind you, but all that we can find on YouTube. I have even adopted the habit of listening to Bishop on my phone while I'm in the gym. I think that's a wonderful habit. To God be the glory. Thank you, sir. It is absolutely refreshing and and look at this and now to follow a ministry and preaching that is uncompromisingly truthful speaks to the current affairs of the day and challenges the believer to live uh, the life that they expose. We agree one. He's got it right here. One thousand percent. Unfortunately, although we have attended and served in church for decades, we are disheartened how pastors we know and have served alongside with uh, have drawn away, have been mollified, as Bishop correctly stated, uh, furthermore, when these issues are brought to them, they ignore, dissuade, or outright rebuke. Therefore, please know that your ministry, teachings, and strong forthright leadership is a necessary essential, not only in our lives, but in the kingdom worldwide. I am encouraged by these communicates. I want you to know that not everybody, my friends, uh, are opposed to God's truth. There are people who love the truth of God. And concerning current events, something happened to me, something I saw yesterday. Uh, Brother Gary it shook my soul. It has nothing to do with, as far as I'm concerned, politics, even though a, pol a politician did it. Uh, listen, President Joe Biden ignited outrage on Tuesday for making a sign of the cross at a pro-abortion campaign. Now, whether you are a Democrat or Republican or like me, non-affiliate, you got to agree. You, 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 if you're a Christian, if you, if you are devout, if you're halfway religious, if you're sort of kind of religious, if you are an agnostic, if you're an atheist, or if you are a Muslim or a Buddhist, you got to have a challenge, a problem with any person of any political party at any time uh, making the sign of the cross gesture at an abortion clinic, a clip of the incident shows Biden making the important Christian gesture as Florida Democrat Party Chairwoman Nikki Fried slammed the Sunshine State's new law ban banning abortion after six weeks, with the exception for rape, incest, human trafficking, uh, maternal health, and in the case of fetal uh, fatal fetal abnormalities. So they put quite a few reasonable exceptions uh, in that some would argue as reasonable. And even though uh, uh, these exceptions are put in, in the case of rape and, and all these other things, uh, uh, they're still slamming, slamming it because uh, it's, it's six weeks. And these people will never tell you uh, what week, uh, how far along is too far 
for a woman to have an abortion because the truth is many of them believe that abortion should be legal up to the time of birth. And I'll tell you something, my friends, you cannot be a Christian. You cannot serve the God of the Bible and know what the Bible says and still believe this. Psalms 106 and uh, uh, verse number uh, 38 says, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrifice upon the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. The Bible is replete with scripture that warns against the shedding of innocent blood. What has that innocent child done? What wrong has a baby in the womb done? And if it is such a proper and correct thing, why not name it? Why not call it what it is? Why cloak it in euphemistic statements such as uh, health care or a woman's uh, uh, women's health care or a woman's uh, reproductive choices and things like that? I've, I, like that. I've said a thousand times there is no reproduction in abortion. Uh, abortion is not health care. If abortion is health care, then pregnancy is a disease. The argument that they make that uh, a woman has a right to choose what to do with her own body. Well, if she's pregnant, we're not talking about her body. We're talking about that human life that's in her body. And uh, because, hey, I think you will agree with this. She's not pregnant with herself. She's pregnant with a baby. And what, uh, what those of us who believe in life we believe that that baby has a right to live. And so we fight for the lives of the unborn and we will continue to do so. I'm kind of getting off my point. My point is, I never thought, number one, I never thought that I would see a politician uh, campaign at an abortion clinic. And uh, the vice president did that a few weeks ago. And now here is the president at an abortion clinic of all places uh, launching a campaign because they believe that uh, th this is a leading issue and women just uh, are adamant about this. I pray that the Christian women, the born again women, the sanctified women, uh, the spirit filled women, listen, pray. Uh, uh, know the uh, issues around this and, and, and ask God, ask the God of the Bible, ask the giver of life of uh, what you should do and how you should stand and how you should vote and what your position should be on the issue of human beings living and being allowed to be born. You know, Gary, these people behave as though uh, women kind of a, uh, 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 asexually reproduced. They, they behave as though she just got pregnant. You know, it just happened. Uh, less than 2% of all pregnancies are due to rape or incest. No, people are making choices People are doing things and people are looking for um, uh, ways to get out of it. And I understand that in some cases these are difficult decisions and that kind of a thing. But overwhelmingly, what, what is happening is, let's just be honest about it, uh, birth control, uh, abortion is used as birth control. I don't want the baby. I don't want to have it. Child's a nuisance. It may keep me from going to college. It may hurt my upward mobility. My boyfriend is, is uh, he's trying to get to the NFL or to the NBA, and we just don't need this baby. Oh, my Lord. The, the, the condom didn't work. Oh, we didn't have one. Whatever the case may be, there's a thousand, ten thousand, uh, I guess, millions of excuses, hundreds of thousands, if not a million per year that people use uh, uh, for this. But the truth is you're shedding innocent blood and for the, the gesture of the cross, my religion, my religion, the gesture of the cross to be uh, uh, performed at an abortion clinic, it's, a, it's an outrage and it should bother every one of us. And it doesn't matter who it is that would do such a thing. It ought not to be done. Now, I'm so excited. Now, listen, I want to uh, make this known to you. You are warmly invited to join Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. for two remarkable campaign events. First, mark your calendar uh, for the virtual campaign kickoff on Zoom happening May the 20th. 
at 7.30 p.m. This is our virtual campaign kickoff. We're going to put the, the information out there. Join us on May the 23rd at 7.30 p.m. at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for a jubilant campaign celebration service live stream on Facebook and YouTube. The highlight of the event on May the 23rd, here's the highlight, hear from the esteemed church leaders and a powerful word preached by yours truly. Uh, I'm going to be preaching an unforgettable experience. We're calling on the Joshua generation to rise up, to be strong and to be courageous, and all who serve the God of the Bible. You see, the God, and we're going to do all that the God of the Bible commands us to do and to stand on Joshua 1 and 7, and that is uh, stand with us. We're going to be strong and very courageous. Stand with us as we seek to make history. As you know by now, I am a candidate for the general board, the board of directors of the church of God in Christ. And if it is the Lord's will, we will be a part of the general board. And if it is not, then we will not. <laughs> it's as simple as that because I'm going with the God of the Bible all the way. Now I'm going pretty uh, fast here because I have an announcement and I want to speak to my friends out there in the Dallas Texas area, my friends in Dallas and the surrounding areas, uh, Arlington, Texas, and uh, Irvine, Texas, and different places like that in the Dallas, Texas area. This coming Sunday will be something different than what we normally do. As you know, I take pride in being in place at the upper room on Sunday morning. But this Sunday, uh, yours truly will be with the president of the International Youth Department. He is a tremendous man of God. He's preached here many times. Superintendent Nathaniel Green pastor of Grace Cathedral Church of God in Christ doing their uh, union service doing their 11 a.m. men's weekend April the 27th through the 28th I will be preaching the morning service and the evening service and uh, it's an opportunity to preach the word of the Lord uh, to those mighty men of God out there in the Dallas, Texas area. The word of God is going to be preached right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We're having service as we normally do. And God's going to move by his spirit. And I'm like Paul to all the members of the church, as you have obeyed in my uh, presence, much more in my absence and God is going to bless in a mighty way. I'm excited about being there in the Dallas area and we're looking for God to move in a mighty way. And uh, this is not be, uh, uh, going to be uh, 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 the norm because I love being at the upper room. But the God of the Bible said to me after I prayed, when the man of God reached out to me, I said, brother, let me pray on it because this isn't something that I normally do. And God said, do it in Jesus. Jesus name. So we're going to be in Dallas at uh, with with Superintendent Nathaniel Green for his men's weekend and we're believing God to shake the place for Jesus Christ. Now, remember why I told you in the opening uh why I'm smiling. <laughs> Gary, it's good to be at Upper Room, man. I, I'm sitting here and, uh, uh, in my office, you know, with the flag behind me. And, you know, from time to time, we have to explain the flag again. It, you know, that goes to show that's, that, that's the, the sad state of affairs of the church. Why you got to explain why you have a rainbow flag with seven colors that has written on it. Jesus pride. We got to explain it because the church surrendered the rainbow to the LBGTQ plus community, which we here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and others who take the same stand. We refuse to surrender God's rainbow. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want you to begin to pray for us because in the month of June, you know, that's uh, the... Uh, 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 they're calling that 
Pride Month. Well, I'm calling it Jesus Pride Month because I don't believe that we should give an inch. I don't believe we should give an inch. Praise the Lord, because when you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. If you let him ride, he'll try to drive. If you open the door for him, he'll try to take over. And we're, we're not having that. We're going to fight the good fight of faith and stand on the word of God until the God of, Bi of the Bible comes and take us home. So I've talked to you enough today. I want you to meet me tonight. I want you to meet me tonight. I want you to meet me tonight. I'm giddy. I'm going to be at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight, and I'm going to be defending the faith, standing on the Word of God. Bring your Bibles. Come excited, and the Lord is going to bless us real good, and we're gathering for Bible study. <laughs> Ah, that's right. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. I'll see you here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.